Best ever listeners, how you doing? Welcome to the best real estate investing advice ever show. I'm Joe Fairless. This is the world's longest running daily real estate investing podcast where we only talk about the best advice ever. We don't get into any of that fluffy stuff. We've got follow along Friday today with Theo Hicks. Theo Hicks, hello, sir. How's it going, Joe? It's going well. And uh, follow along Friday as a refresher. Best ever listeners, we're going to go over stuff that I learned through the marathon of interviews that I did last week on last Thursday. I do all my interviews one day of the week, and that is on Thursdays usually. And going to pull some things from those conversations because those and, and talk about them because I think they'll be helpful for you and because those episodes won't be airing for you know uh, a handful of months from now. So uh, the first one is uh, was with Peter Knobloch. He's a third generation real estate investor and he's got experience in multifamily office space, hotels, restaurants, and sporting clubs. And one thing he talked about, because this he's a really honed his expertise on underwriting, uh, is he built his own spreadsheet or, or his underwriting um, analyzer from scratch. And he said one mistake most people make when they're creating a spreadsheet and even uh, one thing you should look out for when you're purchasing a spreadsheet i don't think his is for sale either so it's not like he had was trying to sell his or anything i don't believe um he said make sure that uh you have the um ability to put in when leases expire for um for each of the units that you have. This is assuming we're talking about an apartment community, uh, but same, same principle applies for office and retail. And he said the reason why is uh, a lot of calculators have an assumption that uh, when you increase rent, say um, by X amount for renovations, you're gonna renovate units. It assumes that you're gonna do all of them at the same time, but in reality, everybody listening to this conversation knows and Theo, you know, is that it doesn't happen magically overnight. It happens incrementally as leases expire. And it's important to be able to plug in when leases are expiring into your calculator. That way you can have a true staggered approach for what reality looks like versus what you would ideally like, which is all at once um, at the beginning of the year. Yeah. 100%. Uh, um, so uh, an, another way to, to kind of go about doing that without having to, to plug in all the lease expiration dates in your cash flow calculator is to, to have in mind how long you think it's going to take to renovate all these units. So 12 months, 18 months, obviously it's not going to be zero months. It's not going to be you buy the property and instantaneously every single unit is renovated at the new, at the new leased uh, amount. But um, uh, a way to do it, a kind of a way to quickly do it when you're underwriting, uh, just in, in the beginning, obviously you want to do this eventually, but is to assume however long it's going to take, let's say 12 months or 18 months, and then make sure that the rent is gradually increasing from uh, day zero to month 12, you know, by if it's 12 months by one twelve. So if the overall rent increase is going to be $10,000 for let's say $12,000, it's easy math, then each month it goes up by $1,000 rather than $0, $0, $0, $0. And then all of a sudden, up twelve thousand dollars because because that will make your that'll kind of mess your model up. Um, I do want to mention too that we've uh, that's kind of a, a more like an advanced underwriting tip. And um, me and you did do an episode where we talked about some other advanced uh, underwriting tips. Uh, that's episode uh, fourteen forty five, and then we continued at fourteen eighty. So we did ten tips. I think the, the I think we did two episodes. The first one was the the first five tips. Second one was the next five tips. I don't think this was one of them. So I guess now you've got 11 tips for uh, 11 advanced underwriting tips. Theo, I love how prepared you are. Busting out with the episode numbers. I, I just pulled that while you were talking about it. <laughs> man, you're the man. Nice job. Uh, we, got, we got a professional show going on right now. I love yeah, we it. Do. We do. <laughs> uh, let, let, let's keep going and th- see what else Theo has for store in store for us. Uh, next Next tip I have, or next insight I have, or I, I, I got, I should say, from uh, last week's interviews, Nicole Stoller. She's the founder and host of the Richer Geek podcast. 
She's got over 90 units and has a 64 room hotel under contract. Her focus is not multifamily, it's hotels. I don't know a whole lot of people who are focused on hotels and I wanted to talk to her about why she likes hotels and she she gave some some examples or or some reasons why and she said you can get for the same uh for the you get higher profit higher profitability for uh the number of rooms you have compared to per room you have higher profitability per room um versus multifamily uh with hotels and she elaborated more on that and she said because you can monetize hotels um, because they have a different clientele than, say, C-class apartment communities. She said, you can offer free Wi-Fi, but then you can have um, an opportunity to upgrade that Wi-Fi. And, you know, some, as we've, most of us have noticed on planes, when you go by Wi-Fi, a lot of the times it says, here's free Wi-Fi, or, or here's, um, here's a set price for Wi-Fi if you just want to browse the internet, and here's an, an a higher price should you want to watch movies or download larger files. And so same concept here. She said other ways to monetize hotels you can offer when someone logs into the Wi-Fi, you can offer um, just have a, have a splash page and then sell advertising to local restaurants on that splash page. And um, then she got to other examples like, you know, a, there's a breakfast space that you can rent out for events when it's not being used. Um, she gave, she gave a, a list of, of things, but one, one thing it, it made me think of is uh, some of these concepts don't just apply to hotels. They also could apply to multifamily. And for example, um, uh, the, the splash page example made me think of, well, okay, all hotel guests or most hotel guests are logging, logging into Wi-Fi. Um, and they're being exposed to this advertising. What about apartment communities? What do most apartment uh, residents do? Um, and that is, they most of them pay their bills. And so, how are the bill? How is the rent presented to them? And is there a way to incorporate some sort of advertising component to that and sell that space? So, if it's an online bill, does it have to just be? a an invoice or or you know um something that was sent to the to to the tenant on some accounting type of uh paper um uh, or 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 template i should say or can it be something that also has a local restaurant and, and you know this isn't going to be big bucks um unless you have a large apartment community but you could drive some incremental revenue um and you can also be giving your residents some a, some exclusive discounts to these uh, restaurants, uh, so it could help with your retention, which I would argue would be more valuable uh, from a bottom line standpoint than any type of um, advertising pro advertising dollars you'll receive for um, selling that space. Yeah, it's always interesting to to hear how how other seemingly completely disconnected real estate niches are able to to, to in this case monetize to make money, and then try to like just kind of pull the underlying pull the underlying concept of how they're doing it and see how you apply it to real estate. So you did, you did, you did exactly that. So the the free splash page, the underlying concept is just advertising. So what ways can you incorporate advertising into your apartment to, to make more money. So your example was to somehow have an advertisement on maybe the, the portal that is used to, to collect rent. Uh, another example I remember from um, a podcast at, way back in the day uh, was someone put up a, um, a billboard on the corner of one of their, 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 their buildings and uh, leased that out for advertising dollars. So, yeah. so, so, so for these three right here, so the, the Wi-Fi upgrade is kind of like offering some sort of upgrade. Um, so, you know, what can you offer at your apartment that's typically free or, or, or not expensive? And then another something else on top of that. So maybe it's a regular unit and a furniture unit. Uh, maybe you can somehow offer a, a, a free a Wi-Fi upgrade or a cable upgrade or something like that. 
and then the other one was um, the, the the events. So I mean, if you have a, if you have a big if you have a big apartment community, you might have like a really nice clubhouse. You might have like a really nice business center or a conference room that you could rent out to people who live there for you know not a lot of money, but for for whatever event they want to to put on. Um, so kind of just kind of just uh, not just uh, kind of looking at these types of things at a deeper level um, is is I, th- I think is good, and that's kind of exactly what what, what Joe just did. Yeah, I mean, and even if it's a thousand bucks a month extra, which it might not seem like a lot, but a thousand bucks a month at uh, an eight cap, that's $150,000 worth of increased value mm-hmm. that you've created for your apartment communities. A thousand times 12, 12,000 divided by eight, eight percent is 150,000. So you can see how by doing a handful of these, these uh, extra things, uh, I mean, you get well into six figures and even into seven figures just by being more intentional about it. Lastly, uh, Ali Boone is founder and owner of Hipster Investments. She uh, it was interviewed on our podcast five years ago, <laughs> five years ago, episode 40, four zero. Um, craziness, right? Just just craziness. Episode 40. I remember interviewing her. I was uh, in New York City in my East Village apartment in a room the si- in my bedroom, which was the size of a shoebox. And I didn't, the, 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 the room, my bedroom um, only had space for a bed uh, and a dresser. So um, where I put my clothes and I had a closet. So I either did my interviews literally with my head um, sticking into the closet with pillows all around me. That way, you know, the noise from the city, which was, you know, the windows right there, uh, wouldn't distract listeners or I would just do it sitting on my bed because I didn't have a desk or any, any my, there was no living room in that apartment that I lived in for <laughs> nine years. So just brought back memories. But um, the thing that I I learned from this episode with Allie five years now, that last time I spoke to her on the show, is she has an idea for um, doing a combo of a, a burr and turnkey um, deal. So, you know, burr key could be a term, not sure uh, <laughs> about that, but uh, just combining those two. That's what I came up with, or maybe she came up with it. But um, the the way to do it is talk to turnkey providers and say, "Hey, uh, can I fund the renovations?" And you know, I'll be at risk if you know the renovations go over. But at least this way, you're you're getting some of the upside on those renovations. And my question to her was, "Well, I thought that's where they the turnkey companies made their spread." where you, know, you, you make the money if I'm a turnkey company by finding under you know, pro, uh, deals that are undervalued or, or distressed, renovate them, make the spread on the construction, and then whenever I sell it, retail to the investor. And she said, I'd be surprised by how low those margins are for turnkey companies. So they don't really make their, their money as much on the spread, but more uh, on the management. And um, so, you know, I... Uh, so th- there, there's, there's that. So if, if that's helpful for anyone who's lo- working on um, those types of deals, then um, perhaps look at doing a turnkey slash Burr uh, Frankenstein approach. Is this something that she's, she's done or is this kind of like an idea that she had in her mind? Um, I should know the answer to that question. I don't remember during our conversation. It, I, uh, I'm 90% sure that she has multiple people who have done this. Um, I'm 90% sure because I think we talked about it, but for some reason I can't 100% recall. Okay. Yeah, they're definitely an, an interesting strategy and uh, just kind of a, a, another u- unique creative investment strategy. It's always interesting. <laughs> Something else I wanted to say too is I loved, this is kind of off topic a little bit, but I love the titles you had. 
on your earlier episodes. They're great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're referencing what I titled episode 40, which was Love is in the Air. <laughs> I, I love the show notes and I, I love the, because I remember uh, for the first book, we went through the first 100 episodes and the, the titles, the titles are, are great. <laughs> They, uh, you, you really have to uh, think long and hard about what I'm actually talking about when I wrote those titles. Mm-hmm. They're not intuitive um, mm-hmm. for what it is, but yeah, I, that, that was me doing titles. Heck yeah, I like it. <laughs> All righty, great lessons as always. Um, so this week, uh, trivia question. Uh, if you're the first person to get the, these trivia questions correctly, will get a free copy of our first book. Uh, submit your answer either on, in the YouTube comments below if you're watching on video or if you're listening to this on the podcast, you can just email us at info at Joe Fairless. Last week's question was, what is the best city to work in tech in 2019? And this was based off of uh, not just how much money you get paid in tech, but it was based off of all, the cost of living of that, that location, the tech employment concentration, so proportion of uh, the population is employed in tech, unemployment rate, ratio of average pay to tech pay and the answer was surprisingly columbus ohio huh all so, right yeah so and the reason why i asked this what i, I, I say this, do you remember um it wasn't columbus oh i no, said pittsburgh it, yeah he said, he said san francisco first and then he said, and he said pittsburgh i, said pittsburgh, I gave pittsburgh, all yeah. the caveats this week's question is according to the most recent census data what city grew its millennial population more than any other city okay so it's a percent increase not total number right it's actually total number okay it's a, it's a total number <clears throat> total number <coughs> grew millennial population total number um oh let me think about that for a moment mm. Total number of millennials, where are the millennials moving? Uh, I'm not going to say anywhere in Florida. I think there's, there's a lot of people moving to Florida, but um, I think they're uh, a bit older. Although millennials, hell, I'm a millennial. I'm 37 years old, so um, I'd say I'm old too. Uh, <laughs> let's see. I'll go with... Um, Let's go with Dallas Fort Worth. Dallas Fort Worth. All yeah. right. So the first person to get this correctly will get a free copy of our first book. YouTube comments, info at joefairless.com. Last thing, very apt because we talked about underwriting earlier in this episode, is the free apartment syndication resource of the week. And this week's resource is related to underwriting. So series number 14, um, eight part series. So uh, eight different episodes where we talked about how to underwrite a value add apartment deal from start to finish. Um, I really enjoyed recording that because I like underwriting. And that starts at episode 1653. Um, and then it's the, 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 the eight syndication school episodes after that as well. And the free document is the simplified cash flow calculator. So this is a, a, a base, a ba- we'll call it a basic kind of standard template to starting off template to underwrite a value add deal. So you can underwrite a value add deal to completion, but some of the assumptions are locked in. Um, and we got those assumptions on the, the on the um, the cash flow calculator, and the the purpose for it is to to number one give you something to to start with so that you can underwrite a deal starting today. But secondly, and something we always we we we've, we kind of recommend is for you to create your own model, uh, customize it based off of your specific business plan, kind of how your mind works, your experience level with Excel, things like that. And this is also something you can use as a as a starting point without having to know input every single thing yourself so that's the simplified cash flow calculator available for download in any of those episodes uh i'll just go to 1653 or you can just download it in the show notes of this episode best ever listeners hope you got a lot of value from our conversation and we will talk to you tomorrow